Here is an explanation of how electronic boards are designed. The easiest way to start is to find a board called a development kit. Chip manufacturers create development kits to help you design your own boards. Find one which is similar to the board you are trying to create. The development kit includes a reference schematic which you can use as a starting point for your new board. It tells you what components you need and how they are connected. Start with the most complex component. Find its part number and search for it on the component supplier website. Double check its availability and price. Components can be chips like processors, microcontrollers or memories, but resistors, capacitors or inductors are also components. Once you decide to use a component, go to a component library and find it there. Libraries specify the schematic symbol and footprint for each component. The schematic symbol is used in the schematic, the footprint is used in the PCB. We will return to this later. If a component doesn't exist in the library, you will need to create it. Once a component is placed into the schematic, you will see a schematic symbol with pins. Drawing a schematic means connecting these pins. Continue adding components and drawing connections. If your board is complex, you may need to connect schematics of multiple development kits. When connecting a component, always double check its datasheet. This document describes everything important about the component. Once you finish your schematic, be sure each component has its own name. This is called the reference designator, for example, U1, R1, or J1. You can also run an automatic schematic check called ERC, which can help you find some basic mistakes in your schematic. If everything is okay, you can start working on the PCB, printed circuit board. PCB is a physical representation of the board. Here we specify, for example, the shape and dimensions of our board. To create a new PCB, first we need to import all the components from our schematic. In the PCB, all the components are represented by their footprints. A footprint specifies the location, size, and shape of pads, the places for pins, it may have a silk screen or overlay layer which shows the shape of the component, and it can also contain 3D models for better visualization. Simply said, the footprint is the place where the component will be soldered down. After importing all the components, we specify the board shape and we place components on our board. Once all the components are placed, we still need to connect them. If you have a closer look, you will see some thin lines that were imported from our schematic. These thin lines are telling us which pads need to be connected together, but these lines are not physical connections. To physically connect the pads, we need to draw tracks. Tracks are tiny wires connecting our pads together. We draw tracks on layers. Two layers that you can easily see are the top and bottom layers. These are the top and bottom sides of our PCB. If you would like a track to go from the top to the bottom layer, you need to use a via. Vias are used to make connections between different layers. In some designs, there are so many tracks that you will need more than two layers to connect all the pads. These additional layers are inside of the PCB and they are not really visible unless you have a closer look at the edge of the PCB. PCBs can often have four, six, 12, or even more copper layers. Before we start drawing tracks, we have to specify our PCB stack up. Here we specify how many layers we would like to use, but the PCB stack up can contain much more information, for example, the material or thickness of each layer. It's important to consider the limits of our PCB manufacturer. For example, how close can we place tracks to each other, or what's the minimum width of the tracks? We can set these limits in our PCB design software, and then everything we draw on our PCB will be automatically checked according to these rules. The process of drawing tracks is called PCB layouts, and it's not only about connecting pins together. The signals traveling inside of a PCB can often influence each other, or they can escape the board as radio emissions. If PCB layout is not done properly, the board may not work even if all the pins are connected correctly. Once you connect all the components, you can make your PCB look better. For example, make the tracks look nicer or add some text or your logo. After your PCB is done, you can run a DRC rule check to see if there are any errors. If everything is fine, you can generate manufacturing outputs. The most important are the Gerber files, which show, for example, where the copper is, and drill files which contain information about the size and position of holes on our PCB. If you want the factory to solder components on your board, you will need more files. One is called the BOM, Bill of Materials, which contains a list of components used on your board, and also a pick and place file which contains information about the position and rotation of each component. To purchase your boards, upload all the files to the PCB manufacturer website, for example, JLC PCB. It often takes between one to three weeks to receive your boards. When you unpack them, double check if all the components are fitted correctly, measure the boards and upload firmware. Congratulations, you made a board. This was a very short introduction video to how boards are created. If you're interested, you can watch our step-by-step -step video tutorial where we go into more details and teach you how to design your own board even if you have never done it before. 
If you would like to learn more advanced board design topics, have a look at our online courses. Links are in the description. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.